Hello there, good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK, around the world. Welcome to my channel, and for those who would like to subscribe, please do so by clicking on the subscribe bell button. It'll ask you to personalise, or it'll ask you to individualise. You can click whichever one you want. All depends on whether you want to be bombarded by my videos or not. Anyway, um... Yeah, and for my existing subscribers, thank you for your support. Today's video is about whether or not a digital welfare system is going to work or whether it's going to throw people more and more into poverty. DWP has, invest, has a 1.1 billion budget to create this automated garage to deal with applications. They claim it's to deal with benefit for, to do with housing and health care. But when you think only 2% is benefit fraud and 69% is tax fraud, why don't they put all that energy and money into tax fraud? Why? Because tax fraud is usually for the rich. So they prefer to put all of this energy and all of this money to tackle the poor and make the poor even poorer. It's quite sad, really, because when you think of about nine million people are functionally illiterate in the UK, five million have never used the Internet. Do you know how many people can't even afford broadband and internet, yet they are expected to use the internet for online applications? Some of them are digital illiterate. Some make 50% need help with the forms. So what are they supposed to do? It's really sad because yesterday I was reading something about this woman. She forgot to... Um, tick a box and it, it cost her £400 in her payment. She lost £400. Another man, he had, um, they, the, the machine had kind of linked a previous income tax payment with, um, with him and he didn't have no money for a month. He became destitute, he had mental issues. In the end, you know, he was estranged from his family. I mean, these have serious consequences when you're reliant on a machine and not people. There's no human element. We're human cars. And they're the mechanics. That's what's happening. And, you know, sometimes I, I you know, I, I worry really because... I understand the benefits of artificial intelligence in the, se in the sense that it's supposed to be efficient and it's supposed to be quick and speedy and save time. But the fact of the matter is it cannot discriminate. It cannot discriminate. That's it. It cannot use professional judgment. It just uses algorithms. The algorithms make the decisions. And if anything is wrong, if somebody's made a mistake, there's no way of correcting it in any quick time. And by the time it is corrected, if they do decide to correct it, the damage has been done. People have missed rent payments. People are on the street. People can't get no food. And look at all these people. So many people have been found with just a few, a can or, or two in their homes in the cold because they can't, because their benefits have been cut. The humans don't know because it's a machine making the decisions. And by the time they find out, it's usually too late. But this is the world we're living in. We're living in an unfeeling world. We're living in a world that is dependent on machines. And uh, DWP is outsourcing to UE. What's it called? UE. I'll tell you what it's called in a minute. UE Path. This is a company, a USA company that wants a, a robot for every individual. And they've come, they um, outsourcing to IBM, UE Path, Tata Consultancy, and Capgemini. Millions they're spending. 
So this digital welfare state is supposed to tackle fraud. How big is the fraud in, you know, to take away everything that we've ever known? And for it's you know it targets poor people, and that's a sad thing. And the elderly people who are not, you know, digitally savvy. One old man said he doesn't know about. You know what about the learning disabled? How do they complete forms? Not everyone has somebody to help them. And the thing is, with people who are privileged, the people who are in these positions, they have families. They have people to help them. They have people, they employ people to do the work for them. The poor people, they don't have that privilege. Some of them are alone. Some of them live alone. Some of them don't have access to help or assistance. And so these people who are creating these machines, they're doing it based on their environment, their upbringing. And assuming that everybody who's on who's on the dole is a benefit is, is is trying to defraud the benefit system, so everybody's treated like a criminal. Well, not everyone, but you know, I'm just kind of maybe I'm exaggerating a bit because there are some successful applications. But the point is, is that it does more harm than good. You know, it's not a good system when you cannot rely on humans to look at you and say, oh, that person is definitely not well. Look how that person comes hobbling in. Look at that person's skin. Look at that person's eyes. Look how that person, OK, forget how they dress because anybody can dress anyway. But you can tell physically when somebody is not well. Can the machine do that? No. Is it meant to do that? No, the machine doesn't can't recognize tears. It can't recognize pain. It cannot recognize disability, and it cannot it cannot recognize illiteracy. How many do they say are illiterate in this country? Um, yeah, nine million are functionally illiterate in the UK, and five million have never used the internet. Fifty percent need help filling forms. 47% can't afford broadband or internet. And one in five are digitally illiterate. I think it's such a shame. I really do. So apparently they're going to use an artificial intelligence to help people find work. How are they going to do that? How can artificial intelligence help people find work? So I guess what you're going to do is put in the work that you've done before. Forget the fact that there is no work. Forget the fact that people are, you know, there's hardly any jobs. And even in the job sector, a lot of it's being automated. I went into um, a pizza hut um, yesterday. And one person, she said, oh, it's about order and serve. I said, really? Don't you service anymore? Oh, no. Order and serve, and then I'll bring you your plate. So you, so you go over to this machine or whatever it is, you order what you want, and um, somebody comes, you pay for it, and then somebody brings it to you on a plate. So, you know, none of that, all of that people used to come around and talk to you and, you know, ask if you was OK, ask if you needed anything. There's all the salts, the peppers, they're all on the side, the napkins, the knives, the forks. You help yourself. So service is diminishing. No more customer service. Do people care about customer service or do they care about efficiency, expedient, ex, exped, ex, sorry, expedience? I don't know if it affected um, our experience last night, but I did think to myself, you know, it made me think. I did think to myself, what is happening here? You know, people go out to, to have an experience of being treated being pampered and then you're left to go get up and go and get it yourself you might as well just do the whole thing yourself buy a pizza 
from Iceland or another shop, go home and you might as well do it yourself. What is the point? Paying 30 quid to go and do stuff yourself. Anyway, they've got engineers, coders, mathematicians, computer scientists who will determine who is entitled to what benefit. What, what do they know? What do they know? So, um, if you complete the wrong information, you've got an equipment assessing you, assessing it. There's no negotiation if things go wrong. You forfeit your benefits, become destitute, mental illness, family problems. So it's not a, it's not a good thing, is it? Um, I'm not sure I didn't forget anything. There was quite, you know, I woke up. I couldn't sleep last night for some reason. I don't know what's wrong. Ever since I came back from Jamaica, my my sleeping um, pattern is all out of whack. So I woke up at three o'clock and I thought, oh, let me have a look at, you know, like you click on Google. What's in the news? And I came across this and I spent about an hour and a half reading about all this kind of stuff. And I thought, well, I wonder if people know where we're heading with this universal credit because that is what it is universal credit is going to be one massive automated garage and that's what they're calling it an automated garage um i think i have i think i've covered everything i'm not gonna go on and on and on just for the hell of it it's a 95 billion digital service 95 billion automation improving accuracy or eliminating human judgment so i'm saying yeah they might be accurate but remember with computers and with um, that kind of digital era it really depends on what you're putting in if what you're putting in is wrong you're screwed And it's just like with the Home Office. If you don't complete a form properly, your visa application is rejected. It affects your bloody life. I don't know. Unsure how systems will gather information that will determine the legitimacy of claimants. Apparently, that's another thing. The data is currently, they're, correct, they're collecting data from credit reference agencies, police, valuation office, land registry, national fraud initiative. What is the relevance of that? I mean, if you're if you're out of a job and you're going to get money because you've been paying into the system, but what they're doing is they're going way back into your history to see if you've got any um, court fines, to see if you have any council tax, if you defaulted on your council tax. They're penalising you for all of that. Anything you've done wrong in your past, one guy got penalised from something he did in 1997. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's not about people being paid when they're out of a job. Now, it's like they're trying to catch people out and finding any excuse not to pay them. So they get, they're in touch with all of these agencies that have anything to do with anything, finding out about you, creating some digital persona, putting it into the system, and you're totally screwed if you've done something wrong in your past. And you've got machines determining this. You can't even say, oh, well, that was because at that particular time, and try to explain because it's all based on evidence that has been written down at some point. I think it's absolutely disgusting. How can a robot diagnose illness? But, and how, you know, when people find it difficult to articulate what's wrong, we can't all articulate what's wrong with us or our, our circumstances. Some people can barely put a sentence together. If you're fortunate enough to be able to be literate, you're probably not even the type of person who needs a benefit, although there are some that do. 
and they're at an advantage. I think this would be a good way for somebody to make money. If you set, if somebody could set up a company or set up something that will help people fill those forms so that they're successful or they're scrutinized the forms. I mean, you'd need more than one person. And I reckon, they reckon over 20 million are claiming. So it's probably a bit much. But these people need help. Anyway, like I said, I'm not going to go on and on and on. Because um, otherwise I'll be here all morning and I'll be late for work. But yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Take care now. Bye bye.